for our first segment of the day, again, we're going to have our friend Mark Boucher Gobert, who is a garden educator uh, up in Portland, Oregon, and does a bunch of different other garden projects. He's really knowledgeable about garden subjects, and we're going to have him each week in a segment we call In the Garden with MBC. Hey guys, welcome to our first recorded episode of In the Garden with NBC. I'm so excited to be with you in this way on Let's Get Growing Live with Enoch Graham, my buddy Enoch. And before we plunge into all the tips, techniques, tricks that I've learned in my gardening career, and before we go to the various locations where I garden, Noble Rot Rooftop in Portland, Oregon, Franciscan Montessori Earth School in Portland, my home also in Portland, and my basement grow room. Before we get into all that, I wanted to stay with the theme we started a little bit last week about our garden story, about our motivations, about the reason why we do this, why this is important to our lives. And I wanna introduce my own story a little bit more in depth, see if it resonates with you at all, and also just to ask you to consider your motivations, your inspirations, it's a time to give a little bit of gratitude to our mentors, and that's just what I'm gonna do for you right now. I'm gonna show you three books that influenced me, and two of them are people. Two of them represent people. So the first one is this guy, Albert Lachance. There he is. I met Albert in the 80s and, and was friends with him in the, in the 90s, and Albert was a very important figure for me. He wrote this book called Green Spirit, which is a kind of a cultural diagnosis. It's, it diagnoses our culture as an addictive culture through the process of consumerism. And then he goes on to use the 12 steps of AA to suggest a path out of that where we can restore a functional relationship, a beautiful relationship with earth rather than consuming and destroying it, which seems to be the path we're still on. Um, I'm not gonna go into that method so much as to just say, Albert really awakened in me the capacity to feel what was going on in the culture, to grieve what was going on to the culture, but then also to hear a call to do something about it, to do something with my life. And at that point when I met Albert, I was open to doing that. And he's the guy who encouraged me to pursue farming. How did he do this? I still remember the conversation. One night in his gravelly voice, he was talking to me and he said, you've got to look at yourself in the mirror. Everyone has to look at themselves in the mirror and say, I don't care if I just grow one geranium in a pot, I'm a farmer. That sentence, that phrase that Albert uttered really allowed me to start considering this, to start thinking about myself in this way. I had never done that. Prior to meeting Albert, prior to, through all my school years, through all my childhood growing up, I had never grown a single thing, never grown a garden. Well, I grew up one corn plant in kindergarten, okay? But other than that, nothing. So Albert awakened in me the possibility of becoming a farmer. Then the next thing he did was introduce me to composting. And I took the bait, I took, I took it hook, line and sinker. I went crazy for composting. I was snatching leaves from neighbors that they were putting out for the city to collect making huge leaf compost piles in my backyard, absolutely loving the process. It was, it was working some spiritual work for me, awakening this contact with earth process and being a positive force in the whole thing. And out of that composting journey, I started to ask my questions, like what am I gonna do with all this compost? And that led to gardening. The, the logical thing to do with compost is to garden or grow vegetables. And so that was motivating for me to, to, to grow my first garden. Um, around that time, I encountered this amazing book, which I considered a godsend, The Self-Sufficient Suburban Gardener by Jeff Ball, or just Self-Sufficient Suburban Garden. It's Rodale Press. It's probably out of print right now. I don't think the book is so important because there's some great books out there now as what it held. First of all, there was a kind of a vision given, literally in two pages, 
here's a fellow looking out at just a bare lawn, a bare backyard. Potential, but not knowing what to do with it. And by the time this book takes you through its whole system, you've got the ultimate backyard food producing system. This book spoke to my imagination. It spoke to the part of me that loves systems, that loves seeing the intricate relationship between things. This book introduced me to all the important gardening concepts, permaculture, interplanting, rotation, succession planting, com more about composting, the importance of organic gardening. It gave me facts and figures. It gave me tables to consult. Rodale is a really important resource in the history of organic gardening in the United States. So I was, I, I lucked into this volume and this started to help me build a knowledge base. Because for me in gardening, the, the intellectual part, the head wants to be united with the heart and the hands. So I was enjoying this physical work, but I also didn't want to give up the thinking part of me. And this showed me that farming and gardening is really this amazing dance of so many different elements. And it really takes a deep understanding to get to the bottom of it. I mean, we really don't get to the bottom of it. That's the enticement. That's the excitement. But to try, to try to understand soil, to try to understand microbes, to try to understand plants, the ecological interactions, the complexities, it's wonderful, delicious stuff. And so this book was feeding me on so many levels. It was, it was coming at just the right time. I knew it was time to make a deeper plunge and I found my next and, and perhaps most important mentor. This is a, a book that written by Trauger Grow, The Farms of Tomorrow and Stephen McFadden. Let me produce the, luckily I had saved, there's Trauger and I'm in conversation with him. Uh, Trauger was a German farmer who immigrated to the United States. He brought with him community supported farming to the United States. CSA farming, Trauger was one of the pioneers. I totally lucked into him. I had no idea what a CSA was. I had never worked on a farm. I just knew I was getting interested in gardening and farming. Somebody suggested I go out and meet him. I did, and pretty soon I was volunteering. Shortly after that, I left my job, my teaching job at a, at a high school, and I was an apprentice farmer at Trauger Grows Farm in West Wilton, New Hampshire. This was amazing because now I truly began my farming journey. I was learning the real deal, the long hours, the, 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 the back, sometimes back breaking work, but I was loving it. It was, it was feeding my soul. It was everything I wanted. And that launched me on my journey as I, as I came to Portland, Oregon, uh, where I was going to spend the rest of my life at this point uh, to begin a community supported farm in Portland and then to go out from there to do all kinds of education, to start a rooftop garden and consult with various people. Farming and gardening is my life in so many ways. It's not my only passion, of course. We all have a lot of other passions, but it answers that need to address the ongoing crisis we're having in our culture with respect to our planet it's, it puts me in um, very confidently in, in, a, in a line of action that I know is good and positive. It produces delicious food for myself, for my family. I'm teaching kids how to grow food. I feel so good about that contribution that I'm able to make. When you can produce food, you always have a gift for people. It's just the most wonderful thing. And it just gets me always in the greater natural world, interacting with looking at the birds, watching the sky, noticing the weather, paying attention to the trees, just being with in all the different seasons and in all the different ways, being with earth in all those ways. So for me, this journey has been so wonderful. And I, and I know you share those passions. I know you have your own story. I know you have your own mentors, but I'm just asking you in this first episode to reflect to give thanks for those people and those even even random books or, or tools that might have come your way or a great meal at a, at a great restaurant that excited your passion about food. Whatever it is, think about it. Let's give thanks for that kind of stuff, for that journey that we've all been on. And now I'm just looking so much forward to this chapter, the Let's Get Growing Live chapter. Enoch, 
has an amazing vision he wants to share with you. So many top gardeners are gonna tell you their stories, are gonna give you their tips, and all NBC here is gonna to try to do his part too. So next week we'll be in the grow room. We'll be looking at how to organize our seeds and do all that sort of thing. Start looking at some of the garden planning as we plunge into the season. And I'm just so excited to take this journey with you. So thanks so much for being with me during these minutes and I will see you next week. So, all right. Awesome. Awesome. Again, it's just really a pleasure to have our friend Mark join with us each week to share all of his garden insights and knowledge and all of that. We really, really look forward to what he brings to us in the coming weeks.